Here we are then, the final stage of the five day pastel challenge. So this is all about really bring it together. It's about bringing focus and detail to the focal points, thinking about the composition, finally looking at that foreground area and the hillsides and just consolidating everything we've learned so far into a, some final <laughs> perfect masterpiece. Well, that's obviously the plan, <laughs> fingers crossed. And I will see you there and enjoy. So what we're going to look at now is really bringing final details into focus and using the tip of the pastel to work over quite firmly. So I'm going to start off with probably not the white actually, just this very pale off white and just work my way through here a little bit. I just want to bring up some cloud edges. Now in my piece it's looking quite subtle in terms of how it transitions across into this blue sky and I like that effect so I'm going to stick with that. In your piece if you want to bring more contrast to that area you can always bring the blue cloud further in if you want to. This is tip of the pastel I'm dotting and dashing and pushing and just putting quite a lot on the surface quite firmly. I'm thinking about this diagonal composition and thinking about moving through here up here and through up to here so it's like a zigzag into the picture through here so the main focal area is going to bring your eye through here up to here then across here so I'm not worried too much about what's happening over here in the top corner it's more like these areas here and really making that work I'm just going to take this and just keep working along these cloud edges now you can see quite a lot of pastel dust on the surface there because I'm pressing really hard and there's quite a lot already accumulated. I'm using off-white and not white because I want to add some white over the top and add some final little details in key areas but not have that white spread too far everywhere. So though I'm looking at the photograph and I'm glancing back and forward as I work, I'm not you know, hyper focus on exactly copying the patterns and shapes of clouds. I'm just moving along edges and seeing what comes. And some of the mark making on here doesn't necessarily need to be particularly worked over with the shaper. We're getting to the point where we're adding detail and just leaving it on the surface. I'm just brushing off lightly across to get rid of any kind of flecks of dust that are on there and to push it slightly into the surface. So when I then go with some white, the white will sit up nicely on top and not be too muted. Now we had cloud butting up against these this blue sky here so I'm just going along there and just working in some light edges so just pushing along that edge there. Very similar work to what we did with the, the dark cloud bank lower down. That's for the very lightest areas. Let's go in with something a bit stronger. Let's use a bit of that pale yellow we had earlier. It's quite bright on the surface though. It really stands out nicely. So let's move on through and add a little bit of that in with some of those whites. Now we're going to head over to where the white and the blue meet with this yellow and put a little bit on top, just a tiny dab, just to lift the colour there. But because I'm not going to blend it, I can put it next to the blue or even on the blue. And as long as I'm being firm and putting it on the surface, it's not going to create a green, hopefully. <laughs> you see, things can happen. If it does happen to you, then obviously go back and dust off and redo that. But there's some of the warm peach colour here. It's got that slight golden tint to it, so putting a bit of that through. A lot of this now is just building up some on the surface and not really blending. I'm going to add a new colour here and it's this white pink shade which really belongs nicely with that set of those golden sunset colours. So I'm just going to add a little tint of that through here just to warm up some of this darker cloud through here. We did use some mustard earlier on this. I feel a little hint of this would really work well. What I'm doing is really checking it in terms of the composition in my 
as I look at it, you know, I'm going to say in my mind's eye, but that's not quite what I mean. It's just as I look at it and think, well, let's think about the colour balance and how well it's balanced and how strong some colours are. This is obviously still a very strong cloud bank. And it's whether we add some more of these vivid tones over here kind of to get that cloud bank sitting really well in the rest of the picture. And some of these warmer tones as well. So it's changing this cloud bank a bit so it works compositionally and doesn't overbalance the picture. So I do this a lot. I evolve when I'm working. Well, I don't personally evolve. The picture evolves. <laughs> Anyway, so the next thing to think about is this hillside area. Now, as you know, in the original, we have this dramatic bit of hill cutting across here with some fence posts on it. Not particularly artistic in terms of what we can do with our piece here. So I'm going to base my hillside on what I know is in the field and what I know is beyond it with a further hill in the distance here. So I'm going to first of all just do a quick sketch of what I know is the trackway again through here. So if you have anything useful in your own collection of photographs that you think might work quite well, then you know you can adapt it and move on from this Peak District view. So we have this dark colour on here. So we're going to go in with our dark shades of purple. We've got this nice warm tone as well. I think I might go for something slightly more rich as well. To imply that the ground at night we shall see. We're back to using the flat side of the pastel. One of the things to think about is how much you want to focus in down here because you don't want, you want it kind of loose to imply what's going on without having too much added detail but also bear in mind realistically what it should look like so we've got this hillside here and as it comes towards this light area there should be more of a silhouette towards the top here so i'm going to use this darker gray and find a nice flat smooth side on it And start to bring that up over the edge of my cloud there. So I'm pressing really hard. I'm tipping the flat end towards the horizon line and then taking the pressure off as it comes further into the hill. So it's not it's tougher one end and then lighter this end. So it get a variety of pressure. Then blow the excess dust off. Try to avoid blowing anything that's very dark towards your light areas because it will stick on top of other bits of pastel, so you don't want that to happen. So take the shape now, just run along that edge and just smooth that in a bit. Now there is this fence post along here, breaking up the horizon. So it, it's tempting, isn't it? Shall we or shan't we? <laughs> Votes, please. <laughs> Um, we could give it a go, couldn't we? It'd be quite nice to break that, but then it's quite nice as a sharp shape. Ooh, decisions. Let's try. So for this experiment in whether or not it's a good idea to add fence posts in, we shall see. And it's the great thing about pastel is that you can try. We can try. If it doesn't work, we can dust it off and hopefully retouch. Possibly not retouch so well here, but wait, we'll come to that. But it's nice to break that across the horizon, isn't it? And just link the two areas. So I'm going to give it a go. So this is Wolf's Carve and it's a combination of graphite and charcoal. So it gives you a really sharp, precise, but dark mark. And it's very much more precision based than it would be working with a charcoal or pastel pencil. So I'm going to just nick into here and just put a little nick of colour coming up. What well, colour? It's black, but some fence post just coming up through here. I think I'll leave it like that. And I won't add any more texture. We'll just see how I feel about that tomorrow. Because it's always good to have a fresh eye. So I did talk about taking a photograph, crop it on your smartphone, and that means you then get a really crisp, fresh look at it. The next day works just as well. Deciding what works and doesn't work. I'm getting so excited now by fence posts here. I'm just 
only a few more honestly only stop someone take me away from it right okay well thank you for taking part in my five day path to challenge and carrying on with me until the end i hope you have enjoyed the process and learned about how i work with pastels obviously there's no right and wrong answer to this this is just the process that i use and feel free to adapt the process to your techniques and adapt the picture for your palette and what you've got available i really look forward to seeing everyone's outcomes and discussing them with you it's going to be really exciting to see and hopefully that as i said right at the beginning i think i might have said they might all be quite different and that's great you can see in mine how it's begun with that sky and it's evolved into something a bit different based on that sky and that's great that's what it should be like it should move on and change and i hope yours has done the same so we've gone from this which is a photograph which has got odd patches and bleached out sky into this slightly more subtle but different again down here last thing to do then is the fun bit so i'm going to zoom out and let's peel the paper off now because i was doing the five day pastel challenge i've been working at a flat surface which i don't normally do because obviously i need to film it from above so you can see what i'm doing and not have to worry about strange angles so i'm on this table i use for workshops so here we go it's very satisfying isn't it Anyway, there we go, everyone, and let's chat later. Thank you for stopping by.